All right, we're going to start off with some depth cuts using the Meisinger 1.5 millimeter depth cut burr. Sink it in the central groove all the way down. It will bottom out and then go through your buckle and buckle grooves there. See, I'm going right through and then through the cusp tips. And then I'm going to go, same thing on lingual, through the cusp tip, through the lingual groove, and then back through the transverse ridge. So you want about four or five on each side and then through the central groove. Smooth all those out with the football diamond real quick. Um, don't focus too much on having everything perfect at this point. We'll go back and do that later. All right, so see, I'm not really worrying too much about anatomy. I'm gonna do a simple Y shape with the football. Um, and I'm gonna re-accentuate that later. Switch to a 878K018 chamfer diamond for a heavy chamfer. And I'm not doing depth cuts on the axial walls. I think that's ridiculous. Um, just go ahead and start focusing on your finish line. By definition, if you hold your belt, your burr parallel to the long axis of the tooth and you give it me a one millimeter chamfer, it's almost impossible to under reduce your axial wall. So I'm just focusing on my finish line here, trying to get a heavy chamfer. Very good, and I'm just trying to keep it about a half to one millimeter super gingival. Do not hit your tissue, that's just gonna be bad. And get it relatively smooth, but don't focus so much on it at this point. You're just trying to do a rough cut gross reduction right here. There you go. And so by doing this little functional cusp bevel right there at about a 45 degree angle, um, I'm just ensuring that later on I could keep that in my preparation. Now I'm just fine tuning that finish line again. Okay. So the next step is going to be interproximal reduction. I'm going to switch to 016 here because it's a little scary to take the 018 through, even though you could because you, you need a heavy finish line all the way through. And you could even with these PFM preps, so with your gold, you were so worried about having a heavy margin on the interproximal, you could keep a pretty heavy margin, about a one millimeter um, chamfer on these PFM preps until about the line angle of the lingual. So right about there, you start to transition to a light chamfer. And you're gonna use that same 016 to do the lingual cuts. There you go, I'm doing a little light chamfer now on the lingual. And I'm trying to blend that light chamfer in with the heavy chamfer right about the corner uh, line angle of the lingual. Right there. Now I'm going to do a Y. Here you go. Lingual groove, two buckle grooves right there. Little Y shape. I'm going to switch to the 018 because I like it a little bit better for fine tuning my occlusal anatomy. It's smoother. The bigger the burr, the smoother the cut. Now I'm going to add triangular fossas and transverse ridges a little bit, very subtly. You don't want to go crazy. And you definitely don't want to do all this for an all ceramic prep. This is mainly a porcelain fused to metal anatomical reduction here. So rather than worry about keeping the anatomy from the get go, I just kind of add it back in later. Let's see, fine tuning my bevel. Um, lingual should have a just a slight bevel. Non functional cusp bevel is really subtle. And then I'm just making sure that I have smooth finish lines now. Slowed the speed down to maybe like a 10 rather than a 20.
buckle groove. I like that. No sharp, sharp corners. Rounding that marginal ridge. Accentuating a little bit of last minute anatomy. So this is a good rough prep. Um, you know, it'll give you like a 75. And what you need to do is learn how to take something like this, which is like a five minute prep, and turn it into something that's a little bit more amazing. Spend some time with smoothing things and looking at your prep, determining what you could do to better it. Because it's not about just doing a clinically acceptable prep, it's about doing for the patient the best work that can be done. Um, if you went in for heart surgery, do you want just an acceptable heart surgery or you want one that's going to be really good? So now we're going to um, just smooth some things. You notice the heavy chamfer there and then as you start to go to the lingual, um, you start to get a lot lighter. It's, although it's hard to see from this angle. And so that's the 018 still. And I'm just going to smooth some things. Um, you don't have to. I'm just adding a little bit of delineation for that distal buckle cusp. I'm just kind of. It's on slow. A little slower speed here. Not. Don't do too much. You just. You don't need to have crazy anatomy because you're going to. Sometimes you wind up ruining it when you go back and, you know, try to do all this. Just got to be careful. Make sure to always re-accentuate your functional cusp bevel after you do that. All right, so we are going to, now after we finish smoothing the occlusal, making sure there's no weird lumps that don't belong in sharp little grooves, we're going to accentuate that finish line. And so we're just going to smooth it, make sure it's uniform in thickness, one millimeter on the facial, all the way through the interproximal till about right there. Now we're going to transition to a light finish line, a half a millimeter gold margin. Maybe we could <clears throat> turn the camera so we could see that. And so we got a 016 here, and this is the light chamfer. No more than a half a millimeter, and it just blends right into that heavy chamfer. So that's it. I hope this helps a little bit uh, with something um, that's a little bit hard to understand. And um, if you have any questions, just email me, and I'll be glad to sit down with you also and help you out one-on-one. Uh,